This is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we'll need to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then we'll use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. So it's not necessary to remove the back plate if you needed to replace the camera lens cover. There are 12 Phillips screws which need to be removed. There are numerous antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover, which are the light gray color lines. The NFC antenna is located here. This is the wireless charging coil. And there's graphite film to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. There are also three coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board which need to be disconnected by popping them off. Here's a better look at the 12 megapixel front facing camera. This is the millimeter wave 5G antenna. Not all versions of this phone will have this 5G millimeter wave antenna. It's only for regions which support 5G millimeter wave technology. There is a single Phillips screw holding down the main board. This phone has a dual layer board design. There's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens a 12 megapixel main camera, a 3D TOF sensor, as well as a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. The main camera and the telephoto lens are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. The cable for the telephoto lens can be disconnected by just popping it off. There's also a secondary microphone located on the top corner. And here's a look with the front shield removed. The proximity sensor is located on the back, as well as the connector for the headphone jack, and the connectors for the rest of the cameras. There are also two thermal pads on the back shield to help transfer heat. Here's a better look at the headphone jack. There are two Phillips screws holding down the metal plate which is covering the connectors for the cameras. Once the shield on the back is removed, we can see another thermal pad on top of the RAM and processor, as well as the ROM or onboard storage. But honestly, with the price these phones cost, I would expect better cooling, either some good thermal paste or some sort of vapor chamber. To remove the battery, there's an adhesive pull tab on the top left corner, but these pull tabs usually tend to rip, so I'm just going to apply some isopropyl alcohol to the sides of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. There are some more antenna lines drawn on the speaker assembly, and there's a mesh filter and rubber gasket over the speaker opening. This speaker also has the little white foam balls which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. The flex cable connecting the main board to the subboard cannot be disconnected. as well as the three coaxial cables, one of which, the gray one, connects to a 5G antenna.
There's a single Phillips screw holding down the subboard, which needs to be removed. The primary microphone is located on this subboard, as well as the SIM reader on the other side. The screen cable is connected to this extension cable, which connects to the main board, as well as the charger port. Here's a better look at the charger port, and there's a red rubber gasket around it. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, and then remove the screws and speaker assembly on the bottom, at which point you have access to the screen cable, and then you disconnect the screen cable, and then heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. If you need to replace the fingerprint sensor or the buttons or the Santana Flex cable, you would have to remove those two Phillips screws, at which point you'd be able to lift up and remove that plastic bracket, as well as the Flex cable. The earpiece speaker is located on top and is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the vibrator motor right next to it. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.